The HPV vaccine protects you from the human papillomavirus. This is probably the most common sexually transmitted virus in the world, and it is designed so that you build immunity against this viral infection. So we know for pretty certain that about 90% of all cervical cancers are caused by the HPV virus. So the thought is if we can provide the immunity before somebody is exposed to HPV, it significantly decreases their chance of getting cervical cancer as well as several other genital type of cancers. Cervical cancer isn't really all that common and the reason it's not that uncommon is it's one of the few diseases that we have an excellent screening program for. So that's what the pap test is for. The importance of the vaccine is that if you can provide an additional layer of immunity together with an excellent screening test, then you really can drop the chance of cervical cancer significantly. And I think it's for that reason that, I mean, if you look at the cancers in America, less than 1% come from cervical cancer. And I think that is to the success of the screening program as well as the vaccination. The CDC recommends that vaccination can start as early as 9, but most of the time it's between 11 and 12, and this is for both boys and girls that the vaccine can be given to. If you're under the age of 15, it should just be a two-dose regimen with the second dose given within 6 to 12 months. If you're over the age of 15, then it's going to be a three-dose regimen, altogether given within 6 months as well. And then up to the age of 26, it is recommended for everybody. After the age of 26, you're still eligible to get it. You can all the way get it up to age 45, but the thought process is that if we're trying to provide the most immunity, there's still a benefit, but it may not be as significant as somebody who received their vaccination earlier. As of now, no. The HPV series for somebody over the age of 15 is usually given on month zero, month two, and month six, and immunity has been detected as far out as 10 years. The vaccination has only been around since about 2009 or so. Gardasil is the shot that we're talking about and the one that's available in the United States. And after about 12 years of data, it looks like you do not need a booster shot. The vaccination is produced in the same systems that's made by Baker's East. So Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the name of the yeast that develops this vaccine. If you have an allergy towards yeast, Baker's East particularly, then it's not recommended. But in general, the vaccine is pretty well tolerated. Well, as of now, I think there's about 120 million doses that's been given and followed for about 10 years in the patient population. Of that, it does not look like there's any evidence to suggest it's a decline in infertility or that it adversely affects somebody's reproductive potential. It is gonna be a shot. So unfortunately, you cannot avoid some swelling at the site, maybe a little bit of retinus. There is a chance for a low-grade temperature, but that is probably usually the most significant. In general, you should not have significant side effects. Unfortunately not. That would be great if it could, but the HPV vaccine is specifically designed against the human papillomavirus. It unfortunately will not prevent other common STDs, such as chlamydia or gonorrhea. A lot of different diseases are tracked by the CDC and HPV is one of the ones that has the best data behind it. The HPV sources from CDC is an excellent location to start. So if you have any additional questions about the HPV vaccine, how it's administered, um, please talk to your women's care provider.